The Rolf Record crew here with another Kickstarter preview, this time Bankers and Robbers. Yes, this game comes to us from Faint Media Games. It is a hit and roll game with a couple twists on it. Mm -hmm. And as the name implies, part of your group will be bankers, the other part will be robbers. Uh, but you don't necessarily know who is who. And you don't know if you're going to stay that way. Correct. So as you can see, we kind of have this set up with... Uh, Five players, three of which aren't here right now, but right. we're going to pretend they are. But this is actually the minimum amount of players. That's right. It goes from five to eight, uh, you know, similar to games like Resistance. And basically at the start of the game, you're going to get one of these identity cards, banker or robber. But then you're going to pass it to the player to your left, and they get to look at your card also. So at the start, you are going to know what the person to your right actually is. Right. So in this case, we have them all revealed for you, but they'd be hidden. But I would know that I, myself, am a robber and that Jonathan is a banker. But I wouldn't know who he is, but I would know this guy's a banker, right. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then once everything starts, the way it works is on your turn, you're gonna pick a token out of this lovely bag. And let's say I picked the player, let's just say this is a two, it doesn't matter. <laughs> then I wouldn't be interacting with player two. Right, we're each given a number. So you can't single anyone out specifically. And you have two choices. You give them a key or you give them a gun. Uh, if I think, basically, if I think they're against me, I want to give them a gun. If you ever get three guns, you're out of the game. So if this guy over here got three guns, he's just eliminated. That's it. Uh, keys, however, are kind of what you want to give to your allies. They allow you to do special actions. Now, if you're a robber and you have two keys and you think who you, the other rob, you know, someone else who's a robber has two keys, you may try to call them out. And if you're right, you both move on to this next phase. Now, if you have three keys, you may discard them. You yes. have to look at someone's hand for yourself, and uh, if it's the opposite of your orientation, for lack of a better word, uh, you get a gun. Otherwise, if you have four keys, you make someone reveal to the whole table, which right. is pretty powerful. Uh, if you ever get more than four keys, they're all, you're wiped of all your keys and your guns. So, in essence, five keys get, heals you completely. Right, heals you, but also takes away some of your It's not a choice, choices. though. <laughs> right, it is not a choice. The big deal then, at the end of three rounds, and every three rounds, as so, long as you're playing, you're going to randomly pick someone, and they will have the option to swap two people's roll cards without telling anyone who they picked, and even if they did it or not. So... At any point uh, during one of those rounds in the game, you could completely change your strategy, what your goal is, who you trust. So there's a lot of uncertainty in that regard. If either it's side gets killed completely, the game will end there. If the robbers successfully reveal with each other, then you move to phase two. Right. You lose all the keys and guns. Everything goes back to the center. And the, it basically becomes a whole new game. Yes. The, the hit and roll aspect is done. Everyone knows who everyone is. So once the robbers have met up, the player one, whether they're a robber or banker, whether they're alive or not, mm -hmm. will set up these cards in a particular order, the only ruling that there can't be more than two of these cards together. We're now in a phase when the robbers and bankers are racing to the vault, because apparently first one to the vault gets that. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you get to the vault, you're home free no matter what. No hostages to worry about or anything like that. Uh, and there are two ways that you can move. You go around taking turns. You can pick the cards, and they're very simple. It, you just move how many spaces it tells you. Um, it varies from one to three. Right, from between one and three. Or you can roll the die. Now, with the die, depending on whether you roll an odd or an even, determines if you move one or two spaces. Or you can attempt to move three with the die, which means you're going to roll it once, and whatever you got, you're going to need to roll either an odd or an even again. So in this case, I rolled a three. So I need to now roll it again and get another odd number. I didn't. So in this case, I would actually move back a space. If I successfully rolled two of the same type in a row, I would get to move forward three spaces. Pretty standard. The only thing you need to worry about is these back to start cards. As you said, they send you back to start. Right. After everyone moves, each team gets to decide one person on the opposite team to get a gun, as long as they're behind one of the members. So. Let's say one and two are, are robbers. They actually have the option to shoot any of the bankers, but the bankers do not have an option to shoot any of the robbers. Correct. But even let's say, uh, if, if, as long as at least one banker is ahead, then they have the option right. to shoot one of the robbers. But the robbers cannot shoot four, but they can still shoot three and five. But managing your guns is really important, especially for the bankers, because while the bankers, just like in the beginning of the game, three shots and that player's out, Robbers, because there's only two going to be around, need six to be taken out of the game. Right. So it's much harder to focus fire a robber. So that's basically the gist of the game. It's those two faces. It's a pretty, pretty simple uh, large group game. There's a couple things that this game does that I think definitely make it interesting that separate it from other games of, of this ilk. 
the thing that we mentioned where knowing that who the person is to your right gives you a pretty good head start. Uh, as, as, so you're not just guessing completely, but you still, as you said, you may want to be pretty careful with your information. The other thing that I really appreciate is the fact that you don't get to choose who you give a oh, card yeah, absolutely. to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really makes it, uh, it's almost like Cosmic Encounter if you're familiar with that game. Makes it very interesting because if even if you know someone is something, you may not be able to affect them directly. Right. So it's not always a surefire win. But the big thing I really think that really flips it over compared to when I was thinking the other ones. Mm -hmm. Like that makes it so it's possible, but the big thing is the Switch. Because right. what the Switch is, I do feel like it uh, makes a big difference knowing when and when not to give information then. For example, I uh, in the first game, I was a robber first, and someone switched me with someone else, to, so I became a banker. And the person who became the robber was very quiet. <laughs> which I think, tech, like at first that seems like the right thing, but I think because of the turn order, which is another big thing, because it was a lot of people seemed pretty confident, and he actually knew you were a robber. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't sure if he was swapped with you. But like if you're pretty guaranteed someone else is a robber, you want them to know, especially at the early on, so they can trigger there if you guys had the keys. Right, it's one of those things where you, you want the robber to know you're a robber, but you don't want anyone, you don't, want anyone else to know. <laughs> and if you're a banker, you may want the other bankers to know who the robbers are, but you have to be careful because if you give away their position too heavily, then the two robbers know who each other are also, which they might not know, and that's bad for you too. So there is a lot of that, some of that, you know, you want to be vague but specific in different right. areas. And in that same game, then I, uh, we went another three rounds, I got the switch, and I actually switched up so that you were the robber that entire game, so you became a banker because you didn't have any guns on you. But I switched someone else who had two guns on him, and therefore we were able to win because we shot we shot both of them. Right, lives. it's interesting because your less your allegiance is less to your role. Well, it is it's entirely to your role and not to other people. Well, it's it's not to your role. It's to whichever side is most likely to win. Right. How do you so think? You like, can how can right? I edge myself on the winning side? Which is interesting. <laughs> it's sort of funny also because it. It's like bankers, you know, some might argue that they are robbers. So. <laughs> right. And if I'm, you know, if I'm in the middle of a heist, I'm like, I could make more money just joining the other side right now. Uh, then there's phase two. Uh, phase two is, is, I like that they have this thing that's completely different from the first uh, half. It kind of gives you like a, a part two in a thematic way. Uh, it definitely is totally different from the original, from the first phase. I I prefer the phase one. Uh, well, you it, it's hidden roles. I mean, it's hard to beat that for it's, you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's <laughs> right, hidden roles, right. And this one is, uh, it's a, you're rolling move, you're racing to the finish. It's, it does its job, it's, it's quick. Because you know who everybody is, it doesn't have that same level of suspense and adrenaline, you know, involved. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, for, for being a quick kind of lighter game, it, it gets the job done. It's a, I mean, it definitely does the job, and it, what was sort of interesting, I didn't think about this until after we, we got through phase one, but and during the sw swapping phase, you may also want to think, who's player one? Because mm -hmm. depending on how they set the board up, right. and also they, they get to go first. Right. Like you, this actually was the, pretty much the setup you had, and uh, we, you pretty much said, I have no idea why, I'm just doing it like this. <laughs> and it was interesting, because it sort of came out that like we had to be very specific, like, the card deck isn't equal with what moves one, two, or three. So we started thinking, like, what are my better chances to get a three or a two or one? Because I need a three here to jump that, for example. Yeah, yeah there were some, some pretty interesting uh, decisions you had to make between whether you wanted to roll or draw and that kind of thing. Um, and we also didn't mention, but you can, you can see it, the artwork is kind of funny. It, it reminds me a lot of like an Adult Swim style Rick and Morty a little bit. You said um, American Dad. I American think. Dad a little, some old school Nickelodeon maybe, very, but uh, a, a cute, fun, uh, musing art style, which I think fits the uh, wacky theme of the game. It'd be, it'd be a pretty different tone if it was like dramatic, realistically drawn <laughs> uh, gun gunfights. All the guns are like bloody and <laughs> stuff. Um, but yeah, it's uh, like we said, it's a, it's a simple, fast, easy to play, uh, hit and roll game. If you like games like Resistance, that kind of thing, it it definitely it definitely does move in its own direction. It's not just another werewolf. By or literally something. making you move. Exactly, by literally making you move. So uh, you can check this out. It's on Kickstarter right now, Bankers and Robbers, uh, and look for the link below. Right in this description, leave a comment, subscribe if you like what we do here. Otherwise, we'll catch you on our next show. I'm Jonathan Estes. And I'm Mo Keeler, and this has been a Roll for Crit Kickstarter preview.